Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's podcast. Um, I'm joined by um, Stuart and Joe, a couple of expert um, panellists who are going to help us talk us through today's subject matter around um, a virtual autumn. Um, um, and, and how employers can approach their, their activities in, um, for this coming recruitment season, which, as we all know, is going to be a little bit different, shall we say. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't joined an ISE webinar before, just a little bit of a, um, a rundown of how they how they work. Um, we'll be no more than an hour, so we'll, we'll finish at, um, at 1.30 at the latest. Um, your microphones um, are turned off because we get so many attendees, actually, if we try and do it open forum, everybody just ends up talking over each other. But we do really want your participation. Um, on this platform, we use GoToWebinar. There is um, a questions box. So if you've got anything that you'd like to um, ask Stuart, Joe or myself, um, please pop it into the question box. Um, I'll do questions at the end because we're using slides on this webinar today, which we don't always do, um, and that just makes it a little bit different to, um, to keep an eye on on question boxes and, and screens and that kind of stuff. But we um, we've definitely got um, 10 to 15 minutes left at the end if you want them to to, um, to cover questions. So please, I really do encourage you to to ask those those questions because I think um, the one thing to say about um, this autumn is that it's 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 obviously very new for for all of us um, for for universities as we're going to hear from them um, for employers and also for students. So a lot of this is trying to find our way through it. So I think the more that we can ask questions of each other, the more that we can share our experiences the better we're going to be able to, to, to navigate all the way through this. Um, right, so let's get stuck into the in the detail of it. Um, let's introduce our panellists first of all. Um, Joe, would you like to go first and introduce yourself, please? Okay, hi everybody. My name's Joe Eaton. I'm the team leader for the Careers Advisors at the University of Hertfordshire. Thanks, Joe. Um, and Stuart? Hi everyone, I'm Stuart Marriott. I'm the Associate Director of the Careers and Employability Service at the University of Nottingham. Cool. Thank you both. Um, so um, um, ourselves in we've got a, a universities steering group um, that helped us pull together a document that you may have seen called uh, Virtually Autumn. It's, um, it's our guide to how employers can approach um, um, working on campus, working with students this autumn. Um, and, and part of the reason that um, both Stuart and Joe are, are on this webinar is both Hertfordshire um, and Nottingham, as well as a number of other universities helps that guide. So I'll have the link at the end, but I would encourage you to refer to that guide as well, because that will go into more detail on some of the things we're discussing here with a whole bunch of um, various links, et, et, et cetera. So what I'll do first, I'll, I'll set the scene and then um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to Stuart and Joe to kind of um, bring it to life a little bit with their, their experiences um, actually on campus at the, at the moment. So we'll talk a little bit about the year ahead. Um, what we think the, the picture is going to be um, for the for the student recruitment market. Um, there's obviously a whole range of things that employers could do to engage with, with students on campus so um, we'll, we'll, we'll try and cover as much of that as we as we can so we'll be talking about virtual career fairs um, actually working in the curriculum um, doing extracurricular activities as well because it's not all just about careers fairs because uh, there's a danger that we narrow the conversation too much um, we're going to talk a little bit about diversity because both universities and employers are telling us that this is a great opportunity um, to engage with a much more diverse range of students than we may be maybe typically and that's very important for all our agendas at the moment um, talk a little bit about how employers can engage with universities and how to approach that um, and then finally, we'll wrap it all up with just a summary of our top tips for employers um, for this for this autumn. So let's take a look at the year ahead. So um, for the employers on this on this webinar, um, I'm sure you're probably getting a bit fed up of being hassled to complete our survey, which we're, we've got in the field at the moment. Um, although I joke about it, it, it is a really important piece of work because what that enables us to do is to get a very clear picture of what's happening in the in the student recruitment market this year and to be able to feed that back both to employers, but also our university and supplier partners and really give a good insight into what's what's happening on the ground. Um, but if I go back to the last piece of work we did in May and we asked employers what their recruitment plans were for the, for the coming season. Um, now, um, this probably isn't a reflection of exactly what it's like at the moment, but I thought it was an interesting snapshot to say, to say where, where things were at. So um, the, the, I think the key figure on there is that actually so many employers back in May just didn't know what their hiring numbers were going to be like. For the, for the coming year. Now, talking to um, employers as we do on a very regular basis, um, 
things have firmed up a, a, a little bit, so there is a clearer picture, but actually what most employers are telling is there is still a huge amount of uncertainty um, within their businesses, um, businesses being very cautious about signing off hiring numbers because of course they're trying to project quite often um, to this time next year when those graduates could well well be joining um, so there's lots of talk around actually doing recruitment maybe in stages um, releasing numbers and vacancies a little bit later I know there are some employers who are going to market a bit later than they would have done done typically so I think it's going to be um, quite a bitty recruitment season coming up um, but the second thing I would say from this data is that actually, although it is a difficult recruitment market and there's no way that we would want to minimise the difficulties lots of students are facing, um, we should also um, remind ourselves actually a lot of recruitment is still going to happen um, in the way that it did pre-COVID. So if you look back to um, the financial crash, if you look at our historical data and also the information here is we would expect um, vacancies to, to run at probably about 80% of, of normal. So that is still the bulk of recruitment activity is going to go ahead as planned. So and we know when we look at job boards, we look at what's happening out there, that there are um, there are there is recruitment going in, but recognizing it is going to be a much tougher, much, much bittier year. Um, we did back in January we were um, we were thinking about what the impact of Brexit might be so we did look at the 20-year rolling data and, and that's what this graph shows and actually if you look at what happened in the financial crash you'll see that yes the market did drop you know quite significantly but it didn't disappear totally um, and actually and, I, and, and that's what we've seen so far with the numbers this year roughly 80% of star hiring has still gone ahead I think we don't know what next year is going to be like, but actually if the financial crash is a is a good indicator, we actually saw the second year of that crisis to be a little bit worse than the first year, you know, as the recession bites in and, um, and you know, employers have, um, you know, difficulty with a business case to hire um, the certain number of students they might have done typically. Also for students, they're going to come out of a, um, those that graduated next year, year um, there'll also be the students that didn't find a job this year in the market so um, I don't think we can pretend that actually this is going to go away anytime soon it's going to be a difficult 12 to 24 four months at, 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 at least um, but obviously we'll be doing all we can to keep a, a track on that so with that as a backdrop to vacancy so with recruitment activities still a lot of it going on so a lot of employers out there still hiring students um, we asked employers back in May actually what they were planning to do this autumn and how they were planning to approach the market so I won't go into the detail of this slide and unpick it but basically what we can take away from this is that uh, still a certain amount of uncertainty about how employers will approach campus um, but actually the bulk of employers even back in May were expecting to do um, most of it online very little face to face and again when we ask employers in our town halls what they're telling us is they're expecting to go to market pretty much 100 percent virtually this year so um so that's part of the reason that we we pulled together our guide and also this this webinar to help um everybody navigate that that process so it's not just about marketing attraction of course it's all the other parts of the recruitment process that employers will be doing um, very much online and we're seeing that in the reality of how of how recruitment is happening at the moment and of course that's something that not only ourselves as an industry need to adapt to it's also something that students are going to need to adapt to so the more that we can help students understand how the market working is the more likely they are to ultimately land themselves uh, the right career opportunities um, for them so um, what do we think the opportunities are going to be for the year ahead? And this is very much the, the evidence that we receive from universities as we spoke to them around, around the opportunities that were available this, this autumn. And I'll just kind of go through this list here. So um, um, obviously there's the, there are the, the actual virtual careers, which will you know, be, a, be a replacement of, of the career fairs that, that we all know and love. Some of those will be generic. So for all students, so talking to some universities, we know some that are just doing one large careers fair offering for employers, but then some are still doing, um, also doing careers fairs by, by sector. Um, we'll hear about this um, from, from Joe. So um, other universities are also doing themed career works, sorry, <laughs> themed career weeks, um, either by subject or themes like, um, like diversity. So there'll be opportunities there as well. Um, also, of course, there'll be opportunities for employers to do their own webinars as part of the, the portfolio um, of offerings that, that will be made available to, to students. 
um, online skill sessions it's still be the opportunity to do those both in the curriculum and outside of the curriculum as well we'll talk a little bit more about that um, other universities are offering um, sort of open Q&A sessions for employers so that's where um, students can engage with recruiters um, ask the questions that they might typically ask at face-to-face -face events which of course they, they can't do so they'll be out there um, we've done some some content on this in the past over the last few months there are also those opportunities to do work experience projects online obviously it's very difficult to run internships and placements at the moment although many employers are still finding a way to do it but actually also um, universities in curriculum activities there are those opportunities to, to do those work experience and um, projects in, a, in an online environment if you go back to some of the stuff we put out towards the start of coronavirus we um, we, um, we did a webinar with uh, University of York um, who were talking about how for a number of years they've been able to deliver work experience projects with employers to students on, online and how that's been very su successful um, so still the opportunity to do case studies delivered in the curriculum we definitely know that, that that's going ahead um, Stuart Joe and I were just just chatting just before the webinar started around what's happening on campus at the moment um, with academics adapting to the new environment and how they deliver their content online and there is still that that demand for employers to, to get involved in that in curriculum activities um, it could even be that there's even more opportunities than, than usual as people look at um, richer ways to deliver online content um, other opportunities around things like online mentoring then of course there's the opportunities to, to post jobs on, on universities uh, own, own platforms I think one of the challenges we're all going to face this recruitment season is that um, that for a, it could well be that the market is more fragmented so by that I mean that there are more opportunities for students to engage with employers online there are more opportunities for um, employers to go and engage with students very very um, different different platforms and opportunities and also universities have a you know have a wide range of, of different opportunities they can put out there and there is a danger that actually it becomes too fragmented so um, employers don't quite know where the students are because they're spread too thinly students don't quite know where the employers are so one of the things that we're hoping to achieve by um, by this guide and by this kind of kind of webinar is that actually the more understanding we create amongst employers and universities the more that we can be clearer where the best best touch points are um, for all the different parties to to engage um, so a little bit around virtual careers fair. So these are just some offerings um, that our um, that our university um, um, members um, 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 talked about in terms of in terms of case studies. So again, you'll see these in the guide. And by this is by no means comprehensive. It's just a way to articulate some of the things that we were talking about. So Nottingham, which um, um, Stuart no doubt talked about shortly, you know, they've got um, four different virtual sector fairs on on single days. Um, Cardiff University has an autumn showcase, which is a single day event for employees across all sector. So that's what I was talking about, this difference between some sector specific stuff and some um, um, more, more generic. Um, we've got universities working together. So the example there is of um, six widening participation universities in London. Um, of which Harpeter is one. Again, we've got, we've got um, um, Joe on today, he might tell us a bit more about this. So virtual um, inclusive um, careers fair. Um, so that's running as well for employees to engage with. Um, an example from Un Liver University of Liverpool, you know, a 10 day interactive virtual event um, going over, so spread over, over a three, re three week period. So a whole different bunch of ways that employer can engage with that. Um, going back to Cardiff, they've got a four day event um, that em employers can engage with that culminate in their in their virtual fair. Um, then another example from the University of Hertfordshire, so they've got a week-long work fest with placement events, employer talks, um, combined with a STEM fair. So again, uh, this real blending of different opportunities into one. So I'll go back to that point I made at the start, which this is not just about single hit virtual careers fairs. Um, the, the offering is going to be much more sophisticated um, this year. So. Uh, Talking to universities, um, because remember, some universities have been doing online careers fairs already this year. Some universities, like the Open Universities, have been doing careers fairs online for quite a long time now. So um, we asked those employers, actually, uh, sorry, you asked those universities, um, what is it the employers need to do to make the most of those of those careers fairs? So 
one of them is actually you know really aspiring to meet students expectations um, students um, are you know we've talked about digital natives a digital generation so they do have expectations of, of the quality and level of content um, that they're expecting to, to 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 see online so actually I think it's really important that everybody makes sure they raise their game to, to, to meet that need and don't think of the whole virtual side of things as being an opportunity just to do things a bit quicker and maybe a bit a bit cheaper I think it's it's important in many ways to to increase the level of attention paid to to the quality of, of output. Um, one of the challenges I think for everybody is um, understanding the platforms. Um, some universities use the same platforms, but there's a whole range of different platforms out there. If you think about it like an employer. Um, applicant tracking system. Not all employers use the same system, the same with university systems. So um, it does pay to actually take the time to understand the platform that actually you will be using, how it works. Um, universities will be offering employees the opportunity to, to, to do those, to do practice runs, um, producing guides in how they can be used. So it's really important that employers do take the time to understand those um, those various differences between the platform and don't just try and try and wing it on the day. Um, content, content really is crucial, um, and this you know coincides with a bit around meeting student expectations. Um, again, talking to both universities and employers, those that literally just take what would have been face-to-face -face content and and putting it online without much thought around actually the different the different mediums they're using, the different audience, the different way of digesting it. I think it's uh, it's very important that content is is particularly adapted on online because one of the things we want to avoid is digital fatigue where people just get fed up of spending their time online. So so don't engage as much as they they should do. Um, we'll come back to this a bit later, but a great opportunity here to focus on diversity. The great opportunity of online is actually it makes it easier to reach a broader range of students. Um, we don't know yet. It'll be interesting to, to get people's feedback um, towards the end of the recruitment season to see if actually um, students engage differently. Maybe there are students out there that might not have quite liked the idea of a face-to-face -face careers fair, so it might be more um, um, might be more open to engaging in the in the virtual space. So, so there is that opportunity to reach a broader range of um, of, of institutions and students in a particular institution. Because obviously, um, we won't be employers won't be um, you know travelling around the countryside with stands in the boot of their cars, um, and so those constraints will be will be gone. Um, the other key thing is to brief your team. Um, so employers, of course, will be using um, line managers, people in the business, you know, previous graduate hires. So again, it's really important that um, teams get briefed on actually what the content is like, what the key messages are, and again, how those platforms may may work. Um, one of the great um, opportunities that presented, of course, by by um, a digital environment is actually it is easier to. Um, both get the data and manage that data from your, your student audience, um, more opportunities for doing better targeting of the student audience you want to reach, and then of course measuring your impact. So actually using that data to understand what does work, what maybe didn't work, then how to change and, and, and evolve um, your your offering as we go through the through the recruitment season. So that key message there that has come from universities, which is employees really do make the most of those um, data and measurement opportunities. Um, you know, don't forget about it. Um, this is going off to a slight tangent, but I remember when we did our, we used to do a trade show, I always thought it was quite surprising how many people who were exhibiting at that didn't properly collate the data of who was attending and who used it. You know, it's a real trick being missed if you don't collate that, that information and use that information. Um, um, of people attending. Um, so just before I'm, um, I, um, I get Stuart involved in the in the conversation, um, a little bit more around actually what these co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities might might look like. So there are the opportunities, whether it's as part of a virtual careers fair offering or separate standalone. Um, events that can be run throughout the year and that's that's taking those skill sessions that lots of employers do on campus and making those 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 virtual so to employers it's thinking about 
it's actually that session material can it be converted maybe taking stuff that you've used on virtual internship programs or you've used to actually deliver training to your new graduates who have joined in a, and, and creating virtual skills webinars of, of that for students um, employers will still be able to do presentations online um, again plenty of offerings out there for employers to, 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 to do um, I guess a similar format so they might have done by doing um, what um, something like me will call a milk cram presentation so that's doing a presentation followed by um q and a q and a q and a sessions um again this this um this the the the, the the drive to increase the level of employability that's embedded into the curriculum that hasn't um, gone away um, that is very much still there it's still a key part of what universities are trying to deliver to their students so those opportunities still to deliver you know case studies um, within within course materials to participate in, in lectures those opportunities will, will will still be out there same with virtual projects that I've already spoken about and, and virtual work experience a lot of that activity will still be still be going ahead and um, students still want academics still want to work with with employers um, again that those drivers aren't changing just because we can't meet meet, meet face to face um, for those employers that have been following the news closely, I mean, this is university's bread and butter at the moment, but the number of people going to university, you know, um, UK domicile students, his, um, it's going to be higher than, than ever this year as a result of what happened with A-level grades. You know, that's where um, um, a lot more students were able to um, accept their, their first offering. So there's no signs yet at all the students' numbers are dropping off this year. So um, universities very much to, to meet the needs of that, that audience. Um, and don't forget student societies and student unions. We've got another webinar coming up in a couple of weeks covering this subject. We've got um, a chief exec of a student union and also some, some students who run student unions to talk about this. Those, again, those opportunities will still exist. Those societies, the student union, will still be operating in a virtual world. So there will be opportunities to, um, to, to pursue those. Um, Actually, I'll, I'll leave it on this slide. Um, so, Stuart, can I just um, go over to you now, um, and just um, and and just talk through actually some of what those opportunities are 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 at, are at Nottingham. Um, I mean, we've spoken a few times over the last few months. I know you've really been under the cosh at the moment. So, why don't we talk a little bit first around sort of virtual fairs and events? What what do those look like for you this this autumn? Yeah, sure, absolutely, Stephen. So Nottingham students started arriving back on campus last Monday, the 14th. Ordinarily, we'd have a welcome uh, weekend or arrivals weekend. We've actually stretched that out to a week because obviously we want to sort of manage when arrivals take place. So students have been settling in for the last week and a half. This is their official welcome week. And next week, teaching begins from Monday, the 28th. Uh, since March, the Careers and Employability Service has been wholly online. So all of our appointments and our events have been have been virtual and we've noticed some really good levels of engagement particularly over the summer the number of one-to-one -one appointments have been comparable with previous years when they were in person as well as over the phone and by video so we're pleased with that we've seen lots of events offered from employers so we're very grateful for people offering insight opportunities and webinars that our students can get involved with because they've been very popular too and also the the careers advisor days have been well received by our colleagues because again being online we can send more people to them so in terms of CPD this year, some of our colleagues have some really good opportunities. Um, we decided quite early on that we'd have to move our careers fair provision to be virtual rather than in person, um, mainly because the first thing that we were told is that some of the large exhibition space on campus would have to be repurposed for teaching space, which made entire sense and made just accelerate us in thinking about what we do to offer a virtual careers fair. Um, we're going to use something called Unibuddy as our platform. I don't know if many other universities will use it for careers fair, but it is very popular in terms of uh, admissions events and open days. They have a very good chat function, a very good system of enabling student ambassadors, student advisors to talk to applicants. And our platform will be very heavy text based. It will be like working, uh, like going into a chat room. But we've set this up so that employers will have their own room, their own booth, and they'll be able to set up multiple streams. So if you have different ways in which you want students to connect with you or different topics you want to set up, you can have those as streams within your room for students to join the conversation. So if you want to separate out your internships, your placements and your graduate schemes, or you want to set out by sector of business, that's up to however, um, however people in the room want to set up their chat. As well as a text facility, there will be ability to run a pre-recorded video. And also, if there's a number of questions coming in that are similar, um, there'll be an option for the host to sort of join in an audio capacity and answer all the questions verbally if people 
able to listen. So we're very excited about using the Unibuddy platform. It's very similar to some of the other things out there, such as Graduate Land, Graduate Greenhouse and V-Fairs. Uh, and I think you know, it'd be a really good way for us to engage with a different group of students, actually. We started to think about virtual fairs loosely last year because we had feedback from some of our students just explaining that through a learning difference or a learning style, they preferred not to be in a room of sort of 700 other people. And actually, they'd like a more one to one conversation. So that's something that's always been in our mind the last few months. Obviously, we're going to make sure that our fairs this year are open to students and recent graduates. So previous years, mainly students have turned up. But we think for the class of 2019 and the class of 2020, having the ability for those guys to join if they want to is really important. And this gives us a bit of an added benefit because it means due to the way the software platform works, we can open our events up to other universities as well. So I joined a number of calls early on where employers were sort of expressing a desire to see universities join up or have open access events. Our law firm, uh, our law fair has always been an open event to any university students come, whether from Nottingham or elsewhere. And actually, this will be something all students will be able to join into next year if they want to. Um, we, we do sector based careers fairs at Nottingham. The regular feedback we get from the Trendant survey suggests that our students likes, likes this approach. So as Stephen mentioned earlier, we're going to have a law careers fair, our engineering, science and technology fair, um, our man, uh, management consulting finance fair and then the nursing, midwifery and physiotherapy event. These are all booking up really well. We've got 40 exhibitors at most of our events uh, now um, and we're really pleased because we're not sure just how, how employers will be able to sort of engage with these events and how interested they will be in doing lots of online events because for everything we're doing, Kings, Durham, Hertfordshire, Derby, Lincoln, etc., are all doing too. So we're very, very pleased by the support that we've had. And we're also very pleased to see how many people want to engage in our skills workshops too. So our skills workshop programme is full. Our Spotlight On programme, which is more about talking about an occupation or an industry, is busy too. And we've got really good numbers of alumni speakers joining us from employers for those sessions as well, Stephen. Sorry, classic school by errors. <laughs> I should have learned by now not to leave my microphone on, on mute. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Stuart. Um, and also, um, what about, um, we talked about in curriculum opportunities, sure. and I, I, part of me worries that some of these will get missed by um, employers, because like I said, often it's the, so much noises around virtual careers, but, but there's still gonna be all those opportunities to be able to do stuff actually in the curriculum, aren't there, Stuart? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we have employability partnership agreements with all of our schools. So we set those up and we sort of identify what help uh, schools want with identifying employers and activities that they want to deliver within the curriculum, but also as extracurricular activities. And if you take someone like our School of Computer Science, they have a second year, um, second year undergraduate project where they look for companies to sort of support, assess and review some of the projects that come together from our computer science students. And that's replicated across the university. In the School of Economics, we have a virtual trading event which is really well supported by students and employers too so those sort of activities we're having to rethink how we do them and how we deliver them but they'll still be there obviously lots of our academics have industry partnerships and industry friends that they get into sort of support lecture programs too but it's really helpful when the career service are involved because there's also a recruitment angle we can do and we can also showcase some of the other things that are happening around the university at the same time in terms of extracurricular stuff Stephen we, we've got the Nottingham Advantage Award so there are up to 3,000 students a year do additional modules which appear on their transcript at the end of the year. They're not assessed in a way that affects their end of degree outcome, but they do appear on the transcript where they sort of pass or fail mark. And we have lots of employer support for those activities. So this coming term, Capital One, Boots and Teach First are running things around enterprise, leadership development and critical thinking. So we're really pleased that those activities can still happen, even if they're going to be delivered virtually rather than face to face. Um, we're doing a project this year with our Faculty of Social Sciences to help students who might not ordinarily feel confident about going through a recruitment and selection process to identify where they could improve some of their skills and how they might approach things like a psychometric test or how they approach an assessment centre. And we've actually, for the pilot exercise, um, are focusing on BME students for this activity. Our students' union are also doing some activities uh, around in this area as well. And we've got great links with our student societies. So something we're trying to do is just make sure those carry on and doesn't need to be in person. It will work just equally as well digitally. Cool, that's great. Thanks, Stuart. So that's a whole um, range of different activities that employers can can engage in. Is there any key advice you would give to employers? You know, when they're they're looking at planning out their their campus approach over the over the coming recruitment season. 
Yeah, uh, t talk to us. I mean, it's an, it's an obvious point, but you know, just do have that conversation. Make make that time for the conversation with us because we are really keen to make sure there is an employer input into the activities that we do this year. It is going to be harder to see people in person on campus, but if we can, we will. But we've got great opportunities out there. Most universities now set their career services up, so there is some sort of faculty or school specialist within their team who can talk to the academic, can talk to the course leader to identify great opportunities. Um, and also, you know, we work really closely with our students' unions. Uh, at Nottingham, we fund a post in the students' union, but whilst in the past there might have been an element of competition, actually it's quite collegiate between the way the students' union work and the way the careers and employability service work, because we're trying to do the same thing, actually in many ways and so particularly at Nottingham where we've got a very good way of working with employers and make sure they get value for their time on campus just include us with the conversation we can make things happen I think that, that's probably the best best advice I could give at the moment thanks Rick. and Stuart are you um I guess it's something we'll be able to understand at the sort of I guess once uh, um, a bit later in the year but um do you have any nervousness around actually there's been so much choice for students or digital fatigue from students or are your indications that you know because of all their concerns about this job market students students are going to be even more engaged than ever we, we are concerned about digital fatigue yeah and it's why we're trying to do teaching in person throughout the curriculum where possible Stephen um you know we, we've had to reset rooms we have to give over conference and event space to make sure teaching can take place and we would like to do physical face-to-face -face activities where we can. Um, we're going to get some good feedback from students over the course of the autumn term. We did some activity at the end of the summer where sort of our external relations team went out and talked to students about how they want to see digital stuff delivered. We are nervous but I hope people understand why we have to do it this way this, this year and the sooner we can get back to doing face-to-face -face activity we will do. Um, and this came through very strongly from universities as well, which is that um, if employers think, oh, it's quite easy being in a university and all virtual careers fairs, you know, that's 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 got to be easier than just doing it, doing it normally. And from what I hear, it's the opposite. It takes almost more time and effort to put a lot of this stuff on than it than it did when we used to do all this stuff face to face. Yeah, especially as it's the first time we're doing it and most of us are learning about how to use a new platform and we want it to be really, really good. Um, the, the Unibody system is going to be great because we, we collect information from employers about fares once and use it many times so what we collect for unibody we'll use for our app we'll use for our jobs board uh, but it's just yeah it's just having the time to make sure it's all loaded given that our fares are in two to two and a half weeks time I see Joe nodding ahead there. Joe, I'm going to come to you in a in a sec. So, <laughs> yeah, I just want to show one more slide before um um before I do come and um come and pick your brain. So let me just I'm trying to dry the software at the same time here. So, um, I just wanted to talk through um this slide before we um before we come to come to you, Joe. All right. There we go. So, and it's this. Um, um, this theme of diversity, because both employers of universities have said to us they think one of the great opportunities of operating in a much more virtual space, actually, it removed just some of those operational difficulties of being able to work with a broader range of universities because of logistics or or um, not being able to reach certain students on campus because they might not come to face to face stuff. So, um, so I, I think we really see this as a great opportunity where employers can focus even more um, on diversity than they may have been able to in the past, particularly when we look at uh, the issues raised by um, the Black Lives Matter movement. So we definitely see digital improvements as offering um, many more options to engage um, with students and fewer barriers to, to engagement. I mean, one of the things that employers have said to us um, over the years, and I know this from my own experience, sometimes budgetary constraints, time constraints means you can't visit as many universities as you would you would like to. You can't even sort of service properly the ones that you do want to. So it virtually removes um, some of those some of those barriers. So there is that opportunity to be able to work with a much more diverse range of students than um than employers might do might do typically. And there's lots of case studies out there about um, employers who have reached out um, over recent years to a much broader range of students and been very successful in increasing the diversity of their, their intakes. Um, really important virtually that content is made accessible to all students from, from all background. Um, 
I'll come on to this at, at, at the end. You know, there are these issues around digital poverty, people being able to, to access material, as well as people with, with different needs, whether they be physical needs, mental health needs, etc. So it is really important you focus on that, that content being at, being accessible. Um, I mentioned data on the previous slide, so actually you can enhance your diversity strategy you know, through better targeting, understanding where the students are that you want to target, you know, putting together key messages that, that, are, that approach those groups and using that level of data and analysis to, 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 to really target um, you know, a different range of, of, of students. Um, we again um, had a, a, another webinar um, a bit early this year where we talked about the whole social mobility issue. And one of the key themes that came out of that was, of course, which is that um, as in the face to face environment, less privileged students can be less confident, which means they will also be less confident online. So don't just assume that because everything's online and we just assume this generation you know, are digital and natives and have to everything online, they may well not be. So, um, so it's important not to make the, the, the wrong assumptions. So be doubly aware of any superficialities that may may come across online. You know, give students practical support up front on any tools you might be using. You know, if you think about it um, from a student point of view, this whole idea of an, an online assessment center, you know, will be very different to them, understanding how a whole selection process can be done virtually. And we've spoken to a number of employers who said they've um, they've really factored this into their into their thinking by creating um, um, much more opportunities to to explain to students exactly what a recruitment process, et cetera, look like. And of course, we can't do open days in offices, so actually getting students to come and physically experience an organisation is a challenge, so think about how you might do that. And I also already mentioned the idea of digital poverty. Um, we shouldn't make the assumption that all students have full access to, to tech, to broadband. Um, many students might be using um, their, um, their phone signal instead of broadband. They might not all have you know, a, a, a comfortable space, quiet space that they can all use. So um, really important to remember that you know, this virtual world doesn't automatically create a level playing field for, 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 all, for all job seekers. So if I, I can just turn to you, Joe, before we kind of uh, go into, into the diversity side, because that's one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was particularly what you're doing with Black History Month. But um, I wonder if you can just talk a little bit about um, following on from what Stuart said. Is the, is the offering, um, you know, both in curriculum and virtual is broadly the same at Hertfordshire or have you got some, some different um, things that employers can engage with as well? Um, I really hope you can't hear my next door neighbours just started drilling. I'm so sorry. Um, I will You're carry fine. on. Can't hear it. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, so it was really interesting to hear Stuart talk about the things that they're doing because broadly, yes, it is similar. And um, timing wise, our students are back. They, um, We have about 50% of our students that live on campus and 50% that commute. So uh, the moving in has happened um, a bit like Nottingham. It's been a slightly more elongated process, but the majority of our teaching will be um, digital, digitally delivered, but there is some face-to-face. -face and I think, uh, you know, as, as time goes on and things change, we will be adjusting that and the careers team are, are adjusting to that with the academics that we work with. Um, we've been, uh, again, similar to Nottingham over the summer, been delivering all of our careers content online we we came home like everybody else did in march and um, moved very quickly into doing all of our appointments uh, by phone or by online and uh, again we had we've had better probably even even larger amounts of, of appointments over the summer than we than we would usually have we're usually busy over the summer but we, we found that that students were engaging and we spent a lot of that time trying to reassure them that there were going to be opportunities and um, based on the research that you guys had showed us that you know it wasn't all doom and gloom um a couple of students did actually say to me i think i'm going to wait till after covid to look for my look for my opportunities well good luck with that when, when i don't goodness knows when that's going to happen um so yeah we were busy and um we continue to be busy uh, in terms of appointments we're still going to be doing that on online um we are working with employers in, in similar ways to, to nottingham um we're doing quite a few uh, takeover weeks. So we had some Insta some great Instagram takeover opportunities for employers to use over the summer where um, they literally took over our Instagram accounts for um, a certain time. It was promoted to the students. The students could submit questions in advance. 
and, and we had great engagement from the students with lots of questions um, trying to get on the platforms that they're on as well as obviously ensuring that they're looking at the platforms that are used out in business as well so we use teams um, for our meetings um, we have career hub for our um, our platform for all the the opportunities that employers post but we're trying to ensure that students we're, we're getting in the places where students are but also teaching them about the places where they need to be um, so there's opportunities for employers to carry on with that instagram engagement we have some planned weeks over the coming semester we have a law week we're going to have a, um, a finance and consultancy week so there's lots of opportunity for employers to get involved with that and really get to where the students are i totally take on board that it's it's hard for um, employers to be in all the places at all the times and all of us universities will be using different different platforms so we're trying to make it as easy for employers if we can so do speak to a member of our employer engagement team I know many of you are already in touch with them um, working with the career advisors to try and deliver the content to the students in in their lectures wherever we can but trying to find other ways of doing that so whether it is a Q&A session or whether it is um, a separate webinar or whether it is the Instagram we're trying to be flexible to what the employer um, is also looking to do as well. Um, we have our fairs coming up. You've mentioned those. Thank you. And uh, you know, this is the first time we've done a, a big fair online, but we're confident with our with our software, and we're confident that we're giving plenty of messages to the students as to how to use that software. Um, as much as we want to get the uh, the employers using the software correctly and making sure it's easy for them, we also need to make sure that the students know how to use it and can have access, like you say, it's it's not always as easy as, as everybody thinks. And yes, there has been better engagement, but we do know that some students don't have access to the laptop until the end of the day or have terrible Wi-Fi or are just using a, a mobile signal or just doing it on their phones as opposed to doing it on a laptop. So there are things we've had to try and take into consideration um the, i guess one of the, the main things that we're we're looking at doing working um inclusively this semester and you mentioned it earlier on is the fair that we're doing with the group of other universities and we're really looking forward to seeing how that works to give employers the chance to to be in one place rather than being in six places i mean that's that's going to be really useful and also to get that broad range of, of student interaction there you know we want you to partner with us to um, access you know, our widening participation students. And that's one of the things we're most excited about. That's great. Thanks, Joe, for the insights. Um, um, so should we talk a little bit more around um, Black History Month? Because I think it's really interesting what you're doing there, because it's not just a one-off event, is it? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole range of activities. So do you want to talk a little bit just around, I guess, the genesis behind it and then how employers could, um, could, could interact? Absolutely. So... I mentioned the, the demographic of our students in terms of the types of students that live on campus and commute. Um, we are bro broadly nearly 50% um, students from a widening participation background. So it's really, really, really important to us that those students feel that they're represented and feel that they're getting the opportunities that, that they're so well deserved. Um, so we have, we recruited a team of BAME um, ambassadors they work across the university and we work really really close with them and they, they said to us that they felt that they weren't represented um, when employers were coming to, to fairs um, as much as they would like to have been so they've really fed into the the way that we want to work moving forward we have a positive action statement that many of the employers on this on this webinar have probably seen where we encourage um, them to ensure that they're working with us by sending representatives that do um, give our students you know the, the 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 reassurance that they are represented in those companies and what we decided to do with black history months was um like you said not have just an event it's everything we're doing is spread out across the whole month to ensure that we are allowing lots of different employers to take part so i've mentioned instagram once already but what we're doing this this time is we've collected case studies from our students from our BAME students who are working out in industry or have set up their own business and, and are, are, are working as entrepreneurs. And we're gonna showcase those case studies throughout the month, literally one every working day, maybe two, um, where they will be showcased on our social media platforms, but also um, tagging in the employers that they're at to give the in in employers the chance to have a conversation with those students. Again, maybe doing looking at doing takeovers um, in order to, to show that the students can um, can work in, in in 
areas where they may not have thought they wanted thought they were able to work or wanted to work before we want to show them that there is people from our university that are now working in these companies that have have had successes and you know the journey that they have gone on which may not have been as a smooth running journey um we've done lots of work around reaching out to our graduates and some current students as well that have been on placement to try and get great case studies and that's going to happen over the whole of the month um, there's events happening with schools as well where we're linking in with our graduates so yeah really making a whole a whole big event of the whole month to ensure that students feel that are represented and can see and feel aspirational into the, the kind of careers that they might have thought of they're doing or also that they may never have thought that they could do it's such an important thing that aspiration piece isn't it because if you mm -hmm. if you don't know opportunities exist you don't think you can those places that might be open to you is um you know that that that, that is quite a big part of the of the of the battle isn't it joe yeah and at, at the moment particularly showcasing graduates who maybe studied one thing but are now working in another thing and it is the degree that got them the thing but it doesn't have to necessarily be in the subject that they studied and you know it, it's the time of of, of economic uncertainty that, that often happens that you know we need to get the word out there to students that you know just because you studied that you might end up working in that and you know students often say to me oh, but, or graduates sorry say oh this is what I studied for my degree but I, I, I'm, I'm doing nothing related to that now it doesn't matter it's the fact that you've done the degree and look at how you've progressed and that's one of the big messages you want to get across from these case studies um, there will be things where students have, have studied the thing and now working in the thing, but trying to give give them opportunity, like you say. Yeah, I, I saw some research um, recently that actually showed that students from um, first generation students at university, students from more diverse backgrounds, more disadvantaged backgrounds, actually are much, like, much less likely to have got that message that most employers, I mean, we look at our data, it's 86 percent of employers do not recruit by degree subject that that message mm -hmm. doesn't always always get through and it's such because there's so many opportunities out there I mean I guess with more opportunities comes you know sometimes that paralysis of choice but it's um, um but yeah it's really important to get out there and you mentioned this and I I've um I've heard um your team at Hertfordshire mentioned this before Joe is and I know it can be difficult for employers but students from you know um different backgrounds really want to see employers put people like them in front of them if they don't see people like them often it blurs the message employers are giving out even though employers may mean it students mm -hmm. can be quite skeptical is that is that fair to say yeah absolutely and it and i realize it's difficult you know that that's not always an easy thing to, you know it sometimes can come down to who's available on the day let alone who who the pool of people you have to draw upon but yeah the feedback from our students um, is that that is the case and, and the, the BAME advocates they actually ran a, a long partnership with us they ran a careers event last year where they they took the lead on speaking to employers they took the lead on trying to ensure that the representation was there um, and that was a success um, in terms of the types of, of different types of employers the breadth of employers but also the breadth of people that were represented was, was really good and one of the weeks we're doing actually um we're working with an organization called color in tech where we're doing and this is during black history month um where it's very much encouraging students from all different degree disciplines to work in the tech sector um and so we're working really closely with them during during black history month to get that insight so that students can understand that firstly there are opportunities for them and secondly again going back to that that sector diversity thing so linking it all together cool definitely um, right, so um, as I said at the start, um, really encourage yourselves in the audience to, to ask questions of our of our panel. Um, we've got 10 minutes left, so let's make the most of the opportunity. I've had a couple of questions come through already. The first one's from um, Annabelle. So Annabelle says, talks about, um, you know, open days in offices, obviously they can't go ahead. Um, but she's wondering actually, um, Joe and Stuart, if you have any ideas of what students might most benefit from as an alternative to these. You know, is there anything that um, can be done virtually to, to, to help replace that. Do you, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, I mean, my colleagues in the Careers and Employability Service have really enjoyed the Careers Advisor days and the insight days that you've put on for, the, for, for them, and, you know, explaining about the recruitment process, explaining what the office culture is like, um, and almost giving a virtual tour of some of the workplaces and some of the challenges that you have. So maybe some sort of mixture of what would have ordinarily been an employer presentation where you come on campus and deliver something about 
the company, but then also doing stuff that may be hosted at an office so people can see what it looks like to work in your location or locations. Uh, that might go down really well. And what we've also found from students is that these don't necessarily need to be live events. You know, if it's something that you've pre-recorded that could be published and they can access again and again. So they, they don't have to be in a specific place at a specific time to watch these things. That would that would help hugely too. Certainly here at Nottingham, we've had to extend the teaching day slightly. So whereas we ordinarily have stopped at five o'clock, it may all run up till six now. And so actually being up for students to be able to do things on demand in a sort of a YouTube style, that works really well, I think. Yeah, I would second that. I was I was going to say the same thing. The way some of the delivery that my, my team are doing for the academics this year, we've, we've focused on recording to make it accessible yeah. for students at a time where they may not be able to, to, to watch it live um, or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, having recorded content, which I appreciate is extra work, but it does, it will make, it will get seen by more people. It will make it more accessible to people that can watch it at any other time. So, yeah, yeah. I think obviously everything has to be online, but that, that recording would be really important. Yeah, I've been really surprised actually from our own ISE point of view. In fact, this is living proof these webinars. I was also a little bit skeptical that people went and revisited webinars after the moment. Um, we, you know, we see quite often the the number of people who watch things um, recorded is far greater than the people, number of people who do things live. So I guess it's another great way whereby you can do one thing once, but give it a much longer shelf life. You think of your average campus presentation. You know, you do it once. You might talk to the students who are there, but this is a great way of um, of elongating that that kind of kind of content. Yeah, and recorded content can be used in many different ways. I mean, we we've come back to Instagram a few times today, but you know, that's where students are looking at stuff. So to have something that can be posted on platforms that we know they're using really regularly is going to be really helpful. Um, I've had uh, another question here from from Jackie. So Jackie's asking, and you may not know this because um, we definitely we haven't asked it yet, but we will do in the current recruitment survey out there, and something we will come back to is actually that data on the number of universities that employers are are visiting, and we have seen that ticking up anyway, despite despite um, uh, coronavirus. But Joe and Stuart, I wondered if you have any insights if you see employers talking to you about going to more 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 campuses or, or being able to reach more campuses as a result of the, the current situation? Well, I hope so. I mean, Hatfield is, is a wonderful place, but we know that um, employers do struggle to get to us. Um, so yeah, we're hoping that that is going to be something that we can we can, we can certainly build on with, with employers because they, they're able to access us so much more easily online. So yeah, hopefully that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, we, we've heard the message from employers that they are able to do more things in more places and we've also seen new names come to us as well Stephen so you, you, people that have not worked with us before or have yes, disappeared and, and come back to us and it's great and it's absolutely great if there's if there's more opportunities for people to do that I think it's great for the sector as a whole not just you know Nottingham and Hertfordshire I think if everyone benefits then we're very happy about that yeah I mean we, we, we know that you guys have all got lots of different things to go to as, as, as we have so it must be difficult to juggle all of the yeah you know, different ways of engaging with us all so yeah we appreciate right. the, the fact that you are bothering to come online with us yeah absolutely <laughs> um, another question here around actual student behavior themselves and again it's early to tell but are you seeing more students actually engaging in things like master's programs and and just assuming that the jobs market is just too difficult and almost stepping out for um for a, for a year or two Yes, um, we we speak to all of our home leavers over the summer. We try and try and get in contact with them, and, and many of the people that we spoke to were applying for a masters either at our university or other universities. And we've had some figures through this week from various different departments at the university that have confirmed that masters numbers are are up. And uh, often the reason was I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait another year. I'm gonna wait till after COVID and see what happens. So yeah, that that's something that we're with seeing a, a rising pattern of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't put a figure on it, but our, our colleagues, particularly in the arts faculty, are talking about a lot more students than in the past are talking about higher level qualifications this year. Right. So again, there's a talent pool there to be um, to be um, to yeah. be tapped into. Um, there um, could be a bumper crop of graduates that's next year. I was just saying there could be a bumper crop of graduates next year, Stephen, because there will be the usual 20, class of 2021 with an enhanced uh, sort of master's year coming through as well. So it could be a huge talent pool over the next 12 months that becomes available. Yeah, 
I'd, I'd agree with that. That's definitely what we saw in the financial crash, wasn't it, as well? So yeah. that's one of those things I think we can take, take, definitely take some, some learnings from. Um, so that's all the questions I've I've um, I've had. So um, I've got a couple of slides that I'll talk through. But if anybody's got any last questions, there will be a couple of minutes at the end um, if they if they want to. Um, but I just wanted to do a um, just a little bit of of summoning of sum, summing up. He says that's because I'm I'm eating my word, mumbling my words. I'm as always trying to do two things at once with technology, which is always a bit of a bit of a struggle for me. So the um, so if I just show that screen there, there we go. Um, so just to summarize our top tips for employers. So um, make that content engaging, make it interactive. Don't just assume you can take something that you used to do face to face mm. and it will it will easily translate online. You know, online is a different medium and you've got to you've got to um, very much. Um, you know, build your materials to, to do that. So it's preparing that for an online audience. So it's even more important that you can be concise and be clear. Because remember, this stuff will have a shelf life. So it will get, get seen and used time and time again. And people will share it if it's, if it's good content. And we talked a lot about targeting diverse students. So a great opportunity to target many more students than you might do typically across a range of institutions to make the most of that opportunity. Um, we talked about different platforms. That is reality. To employers, I say, think about it like your ATS systems. University systems are, are you know, the, the mirror of those in many ways. So you wouldn't expect what employers to have the same system. So you can't expect universities to. So you do need to be aware of that and, and prepare for those. Um, and make the most of the data that comes from those platforms you know is um, from my own experience I know how difficult it is to, to to track candidates who might come to your face to face events but by um, by the way the whole online piece works registering etc there's great opportunities both to get data analysis but also just to keep in touch with 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 students um, really important that you're organized and you'll brief your team um, it is <laughs> there's a bit less room for error when it comes to comes to online if you're doing something face to face and you have to start a few minutes late because somebody's late that's fine you um you don't quite have that flexibility online it's a bit starker than that so very much important that that preparation piece um as we've seen from Stuart and Joe really great insights into the kind of offering they have so I can't emphasize this enough really important that you work with the career services um talk to those career services um they um they can tell you all the offerings they have and they can engage with but are also the gateways to doing some of that um, in curriculum stuff and extra curriculum stuff that we that we that we talked about so it's really important that employees don't forget those those curriculum opportunities those will still be there this year um, virtual workshops works sorry virtual placements and internships you know they don't have to disappear because of coronavirus there's been some great examples over the over the summer um, where employers have been able to offer those opportunities online again if you go back to our um, um back to our content online you'll see plenty of webinars and blogs that and of course don't forget student societies and, and student unions um, you know they are also another source of um, people to work with and again go to your career service they can tell you um, um, how to work with those those different parts of the, of the universities um, and then just a little bit more on resources I've talked about some of these um, 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 elsewhere if you go to our new insights um, content hub lots of stuff are on there blogs and articles go on to the events and webinar page um, on the website as members you can you can access all the recordings um, that, that we've done up to now webinars and podcasts and there's um, there's some great examples of content on there that go into some of the more specific stuff that we've talked about in a, in a bit more detail so please do make the make the most of most of that so I'll just do a quick final check if we've got any more uh, uh, questions I don't think we do he says scrolling down no we're done on the question so that all that leads him to say is um Stuart and Joe thank you very much really appreciate your your insights I know the um the stress you guys are under at the moment if you just think about what's read the press what's happening with the universities you've got a real difficult time at the moment haven't you just trying to adapt everything and deal with so many uncertainties um at the moment so um so yeah so and I think employers should should bear that in mind as they as they reach out to work with you so Cheers. appreciate you giving Thanks, the time Steve. thank you thank you Thank you. And thank you everybody else for participating. So the recording of this will go up online. Um, you'll, you'll get a link. So please feel free to share that with your colleagues um, because we're really keen to share as much learning as we can and look for um, more of our events coming online over the, over the next few months. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.
Bye.